Alright guys, happy Sunday. Hopefully we'll have some fun with this unscheduled live show for this Sunday. Very cold Sunday. The temperature is like, I don't know, 20 degrees and this weather has been screwing with us here in Ohio. That's why I had to play the uh, my dad's song, the Oh Hey, I'm Screwed song from my dad. Sung in Italian because it is somewhat appropriate to be in springtime and it's too cold to even take a walk. So for this one, we'll, uh, we'll talk about what Linux users do for fun. Uh, I have no idea what you guys do. I could only tell you what I do for fun, and we'll talk about some of the things that I do uh, during this uh, show here. If there is anybody watching during this broadcast, again, it was unscheduled, uh, but look, I'm doing laundry. I can't do nothing outside. I wouldn't mind going for a walk or riding my Schwinn or... Well, I can't go to the pool. It's too cold. So I'm, I'm here. I thought I would. This is what I do for fun sometimes is hang out with you guys for my friends here around the world. So if I missed you during this uh, broadcast, sorry, I'll catch you on the next one. Maybe uh, Wednesday morning when we do a Windows Wednesday. Uh, all the things that I do for fun, I have posted links below in the show notes. Those of you who, uh, who watch this and we'll talk about some of the things I do for fun. So let me... Uh, go through the topic here the fun topic then I'll check and see if anybody's in the the uh, chat all right so what do Linux users do for fun you will have to tell me my guess is that you guys like to meet new friends such as myself or other friends around the world especially during the, uh, the two years during the pandemic we were stuck at home so that's one thing I think you guys like to do for fun that being said over the course of 3,000 videos uh, of doing this, uh, Linux users can be fun, friendly, uh, somewhat, f somewhat fanatical in a good way, but ultimately human, like we all are, of course. That being said, let me explain to you the, some of the things I do for fun as a Linux user. For fun, well, I use Windows 11. Uh, it's faster than Windows 10. It works. What can I say? Sometimes I use Windows 11. Sometimes I don't. Uh, I like to have fun with anything that's new, fast, stable, and fun to use. Uh, I've been reading a, a new book. I have a uh, was playing with my. This is the uh, HD Fire Tab uh, 8. I got this a few a few years ago on sale I had a trade and it was like 35 bucks the best $35 tablet I've ever had and I've been reading a new book um, it's called uh, as soon as I turn it on it's called uh, yeah it's the one of the burn notice novels uh, it's called the big fix and this novel is freaking hilarious uh, those of you who remember the burn notice TV show probably one of the best shows on TV in the last 50 years it was on for seven years, and I really, 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 really missed that show. Uh, there's nothing since then, since it went off the air in 2013, that's been able to replace it. There just was nothing like it on TV and nothing since then. So I've been reading some of the books, or the one book, uh, to fill my burn notice addiction. 
uh, as it were. I think the actor who played Michael Weston, I think he is on Law and Order. Um, I believe his name is Jeffrey Donovan. Uh, I haven't seen Law and Order lately, but I think he was terrific and perfectly cast for the character of Michael Weston in the TV series Burn Notice. But the guy who wrote the, uh, the gentleman who wrote the book, I think his name is Todd, for the Burn Notice novels, he has a sense of humor. Uh, basically, Burn Notice is, is, is about an American super spy who uses, who uses his skills as a super spy to help us little people. For those of you who don't know what the show is all about, but reading some of the novel, some of the passages, he, he has a good sense of humor. Like, in, in the character of Michael Weston, his cell phone rings, it's his mom, and Michael Weston says, normally I would, go, I would have her go straight to voicemail, but Michael Weston says, well, if I let it go through voicemail, then my mom will leave a 30-minute painful message on voicemail versus picking up the phone and just suffering through five, mi five minutes of unnecessary message. Or something like that in one of the paragraphs of the Burn Notice novel called The Fix. So, I read for fun. And one of the things I read again is Burn Notice. Another thing I do for fun, well, I just subscribed to Paramount Plus. Uh, the new Halo TV series started on my birthday. Thank you, Paramount. I don't know who told you it was my birthday, but no, it started uh, March 24th. Uh, I watched it last night. It's fun to watch. Uh, also on there, the Star Trek, the new Star Trek TV series are on Paramount Plus. Uh, it's a one week free trial. Uh, I believe it's $4.99 for a month with limited commercials or 10 bucks a month, no commercials. Uh, I don't normally buy extra stuff on cable like Netflix or Hulu. I think the Comcast cable is high enough, but I need it because around here there's no competition in terms of high-speed cable or high-speed internet service. And if I cancel it and went to like Satellite Dish, then I wouldn't be able to do these shows and again, one of the things I like to do for fun is spending time with you guys. And I think you guys enjoy it too, judging by over the 3,000 videos I've done on this Total OS Today channel. So, Halo TV show and um, the Star Trek TV series. Uh, I think it's Star Trek Picard is one of them. Star Trek Discovery. And I think there's a new Star Trek TV show starting uh, in May. Um... What is it called? Uh, let me, no, I don't have to look it up. It's called Strange New Worlds. Those of you Star Trek fans, correct me if I'm wrong. It's called Star Trek um, Strange New Worlds, I believe, starts in May. So, yeah, for $5.99 a month, um, I think it's something I can deal with. You know, they maybe cancel that later. But again, because of the Comcast cable is so high, it works, but it's high. I don't usually buy um, extra stuff. Another thing I like to do, of course, is listen to new music, uh, whether it's from my dad or one of my friends in Pittsburgh is a Grammy winner. His name is Eric DeFate, a two-time Grammy winner. Yeah, cool. Uh, uh, his name is Eric DeFade, and um, it's called the DeFade Family Album. Um, debut, I believe the CD title is New Frontier. So if you like big band jazz... Uh, check it out. Again, those of you who are watching this, check below in the show notes for some links to all of the stuff that we are talking about for today's show. So for myself, I'll play with Windows 11 because it's new. I will read, such as Burn Notice, novel called The Fix. And I, I think on the Kindle or on the uh, tablet, the Kindle book was like $2.99 for a book, which is a great deal, you know. Um, also watch Paramount Plus, the new Halo TV share, uh, series. It looks great. It's not really true to the Halo lore, at least from what I've seen so far, but it's good enough. I'll, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. So the, the cliffhanger had me hooked. Uh, listening to music, and then when the weather breaks, I'll be outside riding my Schwinn, going for a walk, and uh, sightseeing all the single women out there. So that's what I do for fun. What do you guys do? You will have to tell me. Uh, I know there are many, many Linux users out there around the world. And uh, you guys tell me what you do for fun besides playing with your Linux computer. All right, enough of me talking. Let's see if anybody's in the chat. Looking at the split screen here, looks good. I, I'm actually doing the show with, uh, 
with Ubuntu 21.10 because I plan on upgrading the system to the, the the new LTS here in about a month. Again, this is my testing machine. It's not something I use every day. Uh, Ubuntu used to be my number one favorite for Linux. Uh, not anymore. Uh, the GNOME desktop, I don't think it's quite ready for beginners. But with some tweaks, it can be. So for this, I'm running uh, Ubuntu on my test machine and it looks like it's running pretty good. I had Comcast exchange the modem here a couple of days ago that appears to have solved some of the uh, streaming issues I was having in the past since the power uh, we had no power here uh, last month during the fun ice storm I never want to go through that again okay let me go here in the chat see if any draw anyone dropped in all right, looks like Lamer dropped in. Hey, he says he likes to join the live stream, watch watch videos, YouTube, games, work out, hang out with friends, YouTube TV, Netflix. Okay, and uh, he wants to get back into reading. Yeah, I you know I don't. I used to read a lot more than I used to now, but um, since I got this um, this Fire Eight tablet, it's very convenient to uh, take it with me. You know, up into the bedroom at night, read until I get too tired to read anymore and fall asleep. But yeah, I have been doing more reading. I do more so in the winter time. You know, when it's too cold to go out and play, and I, I find it's very relaxing, very enjoyable. And I'm always looking for a good deal. So that novel that I bought for just two dollars and ninety nine cents on the continuing escapades of super spy Michael Weston certainly is. Um, a lot of fun so check that out if you have a Kindle reader or I think it's on Google Reads or you don't have to get on 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 Amazon but I had a uh, someone sent me a little gift card uh, credit for Amazon thank you and uh, I've, I've been using that to make a few little purchases uh, here and there all right I need to take just a little bit of a water break let me go ahead and play a little bit more of my dad's music here just briefly amici sono amici fin quando tu dirai ma quando tu non hai non ti guardano in faccia e vanno per le strade con le bugie in bocca l'amico che hai creduto col denaro l'hai perduto o oh, io ci sono cascato o oh, io sono frecato l'amico My dad's song cracks me up when he says, Oh, yes, sono fregato. That means, oh, hey, I'm screwed in Italian. And this weather is screwing us all. I'm ready for summer. Spring isn't good enough anymore, man. It's, it seems like I want it to go from winter straight to summer and just skip spring. Just give me like 90 degrees starting, you know, March 1st or like April 1st. Just, just give me 90 so I can hit the pool and, do, you know, ride my Schwinn and what, whatever. Anyway. All right. All right, Lamer, let's see here. In elementary, used to read a lot. Elementary school, okay, no, I don't. I don't know any books to read. I tried to get back into reading, but there is too many books. There are. Uh, look, if you like to read different stuff, check out that Burn Notice novel that I mentioned. It's, it's like three bucks. Um, it's well worth it. You know, I'm always looking for good, good deal. So, you know, if you want something different to read, uh, as an escape, again, I have that link below in the show notes. For two ninety nine, you really can't go wrong. And I think the gentleman, I think his name is Todd something. He wrote five burn notice novels. I think during and after the show ended in twenty thirteen. And uh, at least the first one that I've read, it's, it's just a fun read. It's you know, it's just for fun. Normally, I, I read at night uh, to help me relax and go to bed. So. Yeah, um, you know, I try to make whatever I read either. I'm looking for something that is didactic. There's a word for it for today. Didact didactic meaning something that is entertaining and maybe enlightening at the same time. Okay, meaning that we, we have a laugh and maybe we learn something as at the same time. And I think that's the most uh, productive use of time whether you're with friends reading watching something you know or on the phone or whatever 
but uh, yeah, the Burn Notice novel so far is is a good read, and I'll I'll probably buy all all five of them uh, because I enjoy reading something that's uh, different and makes me laugh, and it's got nothing to do with Linux. <laughs> Spring and fall are your favorite. They're nice for motorcycle trips. Yeah, that sounds about right. Not too cold and not too hot. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Burn Notice by Susan Harris. No, I, I believe it's... Look up... Um, like I said, the link below in the show, but I believe it's Todd. Uh, let me see if I can see here in the low light. I think it's Todd Goldman or Goldberg. Yeah, I believe it's Todd Todd Goldberg, if I am not mistaken. Um, Bird Notice the the Fix is the name of it. But look up look up Bird Notice the Fix on Amazon. Like I said, that one was just two dollars and ninety-nine cents as a as a download. Very good deal. And I think they're they're between three and five bucks for the novel. So, you know, if 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 you want a fun read, that's what I would go with. If you just want to chill, you know. I don't know Susan Harris, but yeah, look up Burn Notice the Fix. Like I said, I think there's five novels written uh, about the super spy character. So. One thing about the winter time, lots of dry air, dry skin. I do. I try to do more water drinking to stay hydrated. Yeah, it's three dollars. Yes, yeah, or two ninety nine on Amazon. But yeah, that's the one. That's the one you want. So and so far, it's been a very funny, funny read. Uh, good change of pace. A quick read, easy read. It doesn't get really technical with this you know spy stuff it's more of a read on human psychology and what a particular spy would do uh to get through situations as it were just like the just like the burn notice tv series so again that's what i used to do for fun when i watched burn notice now i'm watching halo and the star trek tv shows on paramount plus yeah I got the free sample first on my Amazon thing, and uh, once I read it, I was hooked. So, yeah. All right, I'll stick around a little bit longer. Like I said, I'm, I'm finishing up laundry. So if there's anybody new watching, don't be shy. Say something here in the chat. You don't have to give out your real name if you don't want to. Like I said, I do these, uh, the, these shows at random times to try to catch people in different time zones. So... If, if, if you're out there watching this now, have a question or a comment or want to say hello, please do. Make this more fun. If not, I'll catch you on the next one. Che piangeva, ah, è solo un balzo vero. Oi, ci sono cascato. Oi, sono fregato. L'amico di parola delle promesse false. Ti voglio tutta mia. Ti voglio sempre mia. Per tutta vita mia. Tu sei l'amore mio. Gli amici sono amici. Fin quando tu gli dai. Ma quando tu non hai, non ti guardare in faccia. Oi, God bless my dad singing in his 80s. You know, when he sent me these songs during the pandemic. Um, yeah, it kept me going too. I haven't seen him in three years. Hopefully he can make a trip here in the States this summer. Anyway, CFWW, well, hello. What's up? CFWW, what do you do for fun when you're not playing with Linux? Besides coming on here to watch me.
You run and ride the bike. That's what I like to do. I couldn't, I couldn't do it today because it's like 20 degrees out there here in Ohio. And it's awful for uh, springtime. Yeah, it's kind of depressing in a way. So, audiobooks too. Yeah, I keep getting uh, these little emails to try Audible. That's okay, listening. But, uh, I mean, I'll listen to podcasts. But as far as reading, I don't like Audible. Um, I, I don't do Audible for books. I, I prefer to actually physically read to exercise my eyes and my brain as it were. But I do listen to podcasts. Um, in fact, I just subscribed to uh, a new pod, not, not a new uh, podcast. He's been doing it. Um, it's it's Bill Maher. Spatry is in the house. What's up? Stable. See, we were horse stable. Spatry, now we're stable since you're here. Likes to play metal on the guitar. Yes, I remember that. Cool. I was listening today to a very gifted jazz guitarist named Norman Brown, a la George Benson. I'm sure Spatry is familiar with legendary George Benson, but cool. Yeah. How you been? Reaper and Tone Lib GFX. I'm assuming that's some kind of guitar audio stuff. Yeah, I'm not the audio guy, but cool. Yeah. CF, you ran 18 miles last week at four different times, 4.5 at a time. That's excellent. Yeah, I, I, I generally don't walk or run in extreme cold. I've been told it puts more pressure on your body, on your heart, to keep your uh, temperature regulated, I've been told. Those of you who are nurses or doctors who watch this, that's why I avoid... Uh, any kind of uh, strenuous activity in extreme cold. I don't mind if it's chilly, but now when it's bitter cold, like in the 20s. So, Spratcher, you have uh, several videos coming up on producing music in Linux. Cool. Well, you're the man for that. Awesome. Um, Spratcher and I, way back, have an inside joke. If something is working or fun it's stable if it's not we call it horse stable or as in horse doo-doo horse stable get it horse stable stable anyway that goes back to the original sunday night news and nonsense thing you know they're stable versus horse stable so hopefully this show is stable you know but um anyway Dominic is in the house. That Linux dude, Dominic Case. All right, Dominic, what do you do for fun besides Linux? Okay. I've told everybody what I do, you know. You got to tell us what what you do because I don't have a clue. I know you guys like to watch here, meet friends, and chat with me, and that's great. But besides that in Linux, what do you do for fun? By the way, if you haven't seen it, that new Halo TV series, part one, it, it is brutal. It's it's violent. Uh, <laughs> Patrick says, dislikes disable or stable. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, right, haha. Yep. The best collection of dislikes I had, Spatry, was years ago when I tried to compare Windows 7 to Linux. <laughs> why Windows users can't switch to Linux. I must have had, I don't know, a gazillion likes and a gazillion dislikes. So, a like would be, hey, Toss, you hit it, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly how it is. Then a Linux user would say who dislike, you have no clue what you're talking about. Like I said, Linux users sometimes can be a little bit fanatic and weird. Rudy's in the house. How's it? Close to your bedtime? Okay. Well, thanks for stopping by. Stick around if you can. I'll stick around a little bit longer. But like I said, I try to do these at different times for people in different time zones. I had some time today uh, because the weather here sucks and we're all screwed. Uh, I got to play some more of my dad's songs. The Oh Hey I'm Screwed song. Hang on, hang on. So 
sono cascato, oh io sono frecato, l'amico trova scusa per coprire le bugie, oh io ci sono cascato, ma no, non sono un uomo ingrato, io sono un altro onesto, e onesto. Yeah. Most Linux users don't know what's it like being a Windows user switching to Linux. I love big Linux lovers. Okay. I'll have to do a new one. Why Windows users can't switch to Linux. Um, yeah, 2022 edition. <laughs> I, do, I do a random noose. News and nonsense. He says, Oh my god, my ears. Sorry, I was loud. That's my dad singing the Oh Hey, I'm Screwed song in Italian. That's what I call the song. <laughs> Mute audio and insert Iron Maiden. My dad does not sing Iron Maiden. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. I'll crank, I'll crank the audio down a little bit here. Sorry about that. Just giving a shout out to my dad, making me, keeping the smiles up. Da 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 da. Lo sarò, sono anni che vi sto aspettando, sono anni di promesse false, ora basta! See, part of the lyrics of my dad's songs when he says, oh hey, I'm screwed. Part of the lyrics, Patrick, you'll you'll appreciate this as an audio guy. Part of the lyric lyrics, and he's singing in Italian. Your friends are your friends un until you need them, All right? Sometimes, right? Anyway, that's partial. It's a satire on life, the uh, six-minute song. So, um, What was I listening to last week? It was rock, uh, or two weeks ago. Um, it wasn't Iron Maiden. It was, uh, who sang Photograph? Photograph, I don't want, is that Bon, no, that's not Bon Jovi. Photograph, I don't want you. Who was that? I can't remember now. Uh, yes, Spatry does usability experiments. Uh-huh, okay. You experiment on something that you can use or not. Okay? Very good. You still on Arch, Spatry? I'm doing this show in Ubuntu 21.10 because I'll be installing the next one next month, the LTS, for a usability experiment. Rudy likes any music with a good melody, but rock remains your first love. Okay, I like just about almost anything. Yeah. Yep. You like to try a lot, a bunch of extensions. Okay. You still on Arch all the way? Okay. Use what works. I don't use Arch. Like I said, the one time I tried Arch Base, a full install, it was a challenge from you, Spatry. It broke my system, and that was it. Once I turned on the AUR, the Arch Useless Repository that broke my system, that was the end for me. So, yeah. Asus 17.3 Chromebook on Best Buy for 149 is a good deal. Yeah. The Chromebooks are great. Chromebooks as a Linux standard are excellent for Windows users. I love mine. No maintenance. Yeah. Speaking of usability, Spatry, Chromebooks, there's zero, nothing breaks. I've yet to see something break or anybody get malware or ransomware on a Chromebook. I, I haven't seen it. 
Not yet. Yeah, I, w I mean, I was told after that to, to be a little bit safer in the arch base. Just don't, you know, if, if possible, just avoid turning on the AUR unless it's needed. That'll help keep the system more stable, uh, you know, for arch users. But, uh, you know, me, I wanted to run usability experiments too, and, and I did. But, uh, yeah. So, Rudy, you had arch for two years, never had a break. Uh, before you updated, you waited a few days and checked the forums for problems. I see. Once sorted, I'd update. So you would check potential problems first before the update. Okay. I did not. Yeah, I just wanted to do a fair, you know, review test, full install of Manjaro at the time. It just wasn't for me, but that's okay. I just moved on. No big deal. I've heard good things about Chrome OS Flex. Um... Yeah. Use make package, make PKG for installing items in the AUR. Okay. Like I said, uh, using the terminal extensively is not my idea of fun. You know, I don't mind it. I'm not afraid of it anymore. But if I have to use terminal to fix things, whether it's in Windows or Linux, I'm just not going to do it. There's you know, it's 2022, that should not be necessary. You know, I very sparingly use the uh, terminal in any Linux anymore because it's not necessary. I mean, you know, sometimes I might do sudo apt install something, you know, if I, if I don't want to go to the software center or synaptic, but, you know, again, it's all about the fun. More fun, less work, right? So far, this stream looks like it's been very stable, running into Ubuntu 2110. Um, I'm happy with it with the, some basic tweaks, basic extensions to make Ubuntu, standard Ubuntu, more functional, more user-friendly. So, yeah. Looking pretty good so far. All right, so you like to use the terminal to save time by jump through graphical hoops. I totally get it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the the thing with with the terminal spatch, you 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 need to know exactly what to type. Um, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know, because I don't use Linux exclusively. You know, but sure, if you know exactly what to type, absolutely. So, Rudy, you moved away from from March when your Manjaro system nose dived. Okay, remember some years ago after I installed. Archbase Manjaro, and I, I turned on the AUR, a warning popped up. Warning, if you use this, it could, I forget what it said, this can blow up your system or cause problems. So when I did a review of Manjaro, I said, uh, I turned that on, the AUR, but I came prepared, and, and I grabbed a little portable fire extinguisher. <laughs> Spatry says, you do not need a fire extinguisher to try Manjaro. I don't know if you remember, but I do. Anyway, no Arch base for me. I'll stick with Debian or Ubuntu based. I use uh, Ubuntu Mate, Ubuntu. Uh, I think Zorin is great for absolute newbies. You know, Linux Mint, of course, you know. But probably my top three for beginners, Zorin, Ubuntu Mate, Linux Mint, somewhere around there. I think Zorn has done a pretty good job with the GNOME desktop, with the modifications, yeah. <laughs> Arch chooses its friends. Okay, very good, fine. Yes, yeah, so instead of Arch enemies, it's Arch friends, huh? Very good. Fedora with GNOME, okay.
All right, Spatry, thanks for stopping by, my friend. Peace. Catch you on the next one. All right, I'll stick around just a few more minutes. Again, if there's anybody new watching, and then we'll wrap this up. Let's play a little more music. just realized April Fools is coming up April Fools Day this Friday. Maybe we'll do something special for Friday, a live show, a Fools Day show. Maybe. All right, anything else lamer before we wrap this up? Again, if you missed any of this on the replay, you can watch this on the replay and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one, but this is what I do for fun sometimes is chatting with you guys. So, Rudy, you don't like to customize the system. You stick the basics. Never had an issue on all computers you use. Must say, it was a Manjaro two year before it failed me. Arch never broke on me. Yeah, I don't. Generally speaking, the most. Um, hi, Simon. No problem. I'll stick around a few more minutes. Like I said, I'm just finishing up laundry, but it's 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 no big deal. It's here in Ohio. It's it's very cold, my friend. So I'm stuck inside anyway. But um, yeah, Rudy, I. The only one I customize more than frequently is standard Ubuntu. Uh, I have a total of eight extensions that I use, seven or eight, to make standard Ubuntu uh, more fun, more functional, easier to use. And I, and I did a video about that a few days ago if you want to check it out. Other than that, when I'm installing something else, I don't really do much customizations. If I have Linux Mint or Zorn or Ubuntu Mate, yeah, it's not really necessary to install, to do any tweaks or extensions, as it were. But sure, the more you install extensions, customize, the system becomes less fun. It's that simple. You know. So, Simon, you are running Pop! OS on a mini PC. Wow. Nice. Yeah, Pop! is good. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you are in sunny Scotland. Very good. Yeah, Pop! OS is another well-designed, modified GNOME desktop that I've played with, and it's very good. Yeah, so. Rudy, you found Ubuntu to be the easiest distro, really, even without the extensions installed to make it easier? In in interesting. Yeah, I can't really recommend uh, playing Ubuntu for absolute newbies. I think it would be a little bit confusing in the beginning, but with the proper tweaks, I think it's absolutely fine. And that's what I'm using now. Yeah, I have the applications drop down menu that I use, and there's some other tweaks. I have a drop down sound menu for the input and output. Simon got lazy, tried to stop bistro hopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too much coffee isn't good. Yes, I stopped distro hopping in 2016 after 10 years of distro hopping. It, it just got too much. Mm -hmm. Out of the hundreds and hundreds of different, and, and there's supposedly 600 different variations of a Linux-based system, it got ridiculous. Really, only about 10 are really good. Really good, so, yeah. So you have Blur Your Shell, App Tray, and Dash to Dock, and Tiling Assist for extensions. I have... Uh, I don't think I have, I think I have dash to dock. Yeah. 
I have uh, not the blur. I have the uh, for the top panel little moons. I have the uh, transparency effect. Um, just for a different look. You don't you don't really need that to make it more functional, but just something different. And uh, but probably the number one extension for Ubuntu has to be the applications menu. Uh, you know, for the drop down categories to make it easier. Well, not just for, for beginners, but myself to get to a specific app, but the applications drop down menu, like what you would have in Windows, absolutely necessary. Um, oh, wow, you found Pop Good for gaming. Okay. You know, it's, it's funny out of, if you search websites like DistroWatch, out of the hundred or so that they have listed Linux systems, I think maybe half are based off Ubuntu or Debian. It's got to be for a reason, right? You know, I mean, Ubuntu is probably the most famous Linux-based system in the world, and justifiably so. Even though it's not my number one favorite anymore, I have to give them credit. They were the first back in 2004 to try and make Linux more accessible, more fun, as it were, for the masses. And I think they have succeeded for the most part. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, as, as far as extensions, I don't know how many hundreds there are on the GNOME extensions website, but really out of the hundreds, you know, you don't, at the most you need maybe 10 or less. Like I said, I got seven or eight to make my Ubuntu better. That's perfectly fine. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, customizing and customizing and distro hopping and fixing things is not my idea of fun. You know, I didn't mind in the beginning, you know, in the early days because I was learning more about Linux. A lot of it is self-taught. I didn't mind. But after 10 years of distro hopping, I stopped with Ubuntu or Ubuntu based. It just got easier for me that way. So... Yeah, the Ubuntu-based systems have a pretty good screenshot tool, you know, so. Ah, okay. Linux is ready for the real. Yeah. Oh, you've been a full-time user for 12 years. Wow. You have to check for hardware compatibility. If you don't or do your homework, it's going to be very not fun when something breaks. But, yeah, I you know, I, th I think... You look at the success of Chromebooks surpassing Mac sales during the pandemic. There's no question that Linux has the potential, uh, you know, to be a lot more pervasive, you know, a lot more out there in the mass market. But I just think we need more than just a Chromebook. It's not enough. Chromebooks prove that you can pick one, okay, one system, one package management, one whatever. And, and I think they're based off of Gen 2, right? Just to pick one, make it the best it can be for that particular product. In this case, a Chromebook. Chromebooks are fun because they just don't break. There's no maintenance. I've yet to see a virus or malware. I'm not saying it's not there, but I haven't seen it. It's almost like magic, you know, so. Um... Yeah, the the uh, screenshot tool in GNOME uh, GNOME Shell. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't use. It. I think you just hit the print screen uh, button, right? Yeah, I just did, and it works. Yeah, and here in Ubuntu, I just hit it. It flashes and it saves it. I think in the pictures folder. There's nothing extra to install. So, um, yeah, don't think Linux is fully ready yet. That depends, Lamer. Uh, Chromebooks are have been ready for years, but in terms of an what else until we get a national Linux standard you're right then it's not ready it, it, it can be and I think we need a, a, a voice a celebrity voice for Linux you know for commercials a person I like Arnold Schwarzenegger I need Ubuntu I need more power Ubuntu for power or something like that it would sell have it at a fair price and it would sell absolutely so, well, isn't though we interchange whatever version of GNOME and GNOME Shell that's interchangeable, right? Without getting too technical. 
I guess you could say Ubuntu has become a shell of itself. Ha ha. Anyway. Extend the life uh, once they are EOL. Um, speaking of that, I think one of my Chromebooks ex uh, expires official support this summer. So I could still use it, you know, as a you know, music streamer or check the news or anything. Uh, not recommended without security patches, but maybe I'll install. I'll install Never, was it Neverware, Cloud Ready, Chromium OS or something like that. Maybe. Or, I, you know, I may just get a 10-inch uh, Fire tablet and just, you know, plug that into my garage when I'm cleaning and just run that with the Bluetooth. This is, this is an 8-inch, a little bit small. Or maybe just get something like that. I think they're used the ones on Amazon for like 90 bucks for a 10-inch HD tablet. Yeah. Yeah, GNOME, you know, GNOME Shell. Uh, GNOME, well, 2011, I think, when uh, GNOME 2 changed. So, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of apps for Linux, thousands and thousands. I don't know if they're all that good, but yeah. Uh, the beta of Chrome Flex. Yeah, Chrome Flex has been out a while. Um, uh, the people, some people who have ins installed it says it seems to work. Uh, like I said, I, I may try it come this summer, maybe. Um, look, it's nice to have choices like that. So, yeah. All right, guys, anything else? It's almost dinner time here. It's 5.24 p.m., and uh, it's time to eat some more of my tortellinis and marinara sauce. Yummy. You can install it Android apps uh, install on the Chrome OS Flex. Uh, okay, I didn't know that. You can on a standard Chromebook. Not that I install install that many. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chrome OS Flex, from what I've seen, seems... At, but I believe it's still beta, right? Uh, but from what I've seen and heard, it's it's... Look, it's nice to have that option. And I think you, it's even installable on Macs, right? Someone correct me. Those of you who have Macs, I don't. Um, the only Apple thing I have right now is, um, I don't know where I put it. It's, uh, I still have a first generation iPad mini that still works. Can't do much with it. It's slow, but anyway, Rudy, it's almost midnight. Hey, thank you for stopping by, my friend. Uh, great to have people come on. So, you know, overseas, across the pond. Catch you next time. Yeah, Steam is now on Chrome OS. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. The only reason why I don't use Chromebooks a lot more for this is because the apps that I needed, they just don't work. They're not ready yet for the Chromebooks, like OBS Studio, Caden Live, uh, stuff like that. The Chromebooks are certainly capable. They've gone a lot faster at higher storage. I think one of my Chromebooks is 512 gigabytes of storage, which is plenty, uh, you know, but can use the apps. And I mean, I could use the standard YouTube app to stream and it would work. But of course, it's a laptop, which means I'd have to hook up my adapter cable to my big screen. And it's a little bit extra work. But yeah, Chromebooks are certainly capable of live streaming and doing a lot more than they used to do uh, 10 years ago. Lamer wants a Steam Deck. Okay. Yeah. I'm not into that. I have my Xbox. I got my Halo TV show for supplemental entertainment. And I'm cool with that. So, yeah. That's all that I need. Steam Deck sounds fun, though. Speaking of fun. All right, let's give this a five-minute warning. If, the, if there's anybody new watching wants to say hello or never had, has a chance yet, I'll stick around for a little bit longer. 
Let me play a little bit more of my dad's song, my dad's fun song, the Oh Hey I'm Screwed song, because Mother Nature's screwing us today with 20 degree weather, and I'm not happy. Yeah, Joey says, uh, what do Linux users do for fun? Play with more Linux, of course. Okay, if that's if that's what makes you float your boat. <laughs> What's up, Joe? Yeah, I meant besides Linux. Myself, I um, but watched the new Halo TV show. Just started on March 24th on my birthday, Joe. I don't know how Paramount knew it was my birthday. But no, so I'm watching the Halo TV series. It looks good. And who knows, maybe they use Linux for the special effects. I don't know. So, watching that on Paramount Plus, watching uh, Star Trek Picard looks good. I feel like I, I should be sponsored by Paramount Plus. All this free PR I'm giving them, you know. But that's what I do. And watching those new TV shows, reading on my um, Fire Tab 8 that I got years ago for like 35, 40 bucks on sale. Still works. I read on this, I read one of the Burn Notice books. I got it for $2.99. You know, some new music from my cousin and my friend in Pittsburgh. So that's what I do for non Linuxy fun. Well, I mean, I'm doing this, I'm running, I'm running Ubuntu Linux, so yeah, I sometimes I'll use this for fun, yeah. But this is just a tool to chat with you guys. Right, Joey, ba ba boo, it's Joey Meatballs. <laughs> anyway. You know, this tablet, this this thing's a rock. This these 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 Amazon ta I've dropped this a couple times and it still works. You know, I mean, they feel like a little brick. You know, for the money, I think they're the, probably the best deal out there, for what it's worth. If, if you want a tablet, you know, you don't want an iPad or anything pricey. You know. <laughs> Yeah, Joe says, more tech information, anything related reselling. Okay, Simon cycling. I will, I'll, I'll be schwinning my bicycle when it gets warmer. I'm also watching Star Trek, as I said, and gaming, yeah. I game on my Xbox and some on, some on the PC. So, um, yeah, it, it was cool. It was cool watching the debut of the Halo TV show. I th I think I read somewhere it was the highest debut for streaming service. I think. We'll have to wait for the official numbers. Uh, Joe watches a lot of YouTube and Total OS Today is the one who contributed and how I came to be here. Well, thank you, Joe. Uh, Joey's, Joey's part of the family. We need to stick together. You know, the heads of the five families. You know, we have the Ubuntu family, the Arch family, the Gentoo family, you know. Anyway, I have met lots of good friends during the years of doing over 3,000 videos. Whew. That's a lot. Yeah. They, uh, Simon, they were, they shot test footage for a Halo film, had to be over 10 years ago. It was the, um, the director was, uh, was the director of Lord of the Rings, I believe was attached to it. Simon, I think. The writer was the guy who did, uh, oh, famous sci-fi, District 9, District 10, District 9. Those two people were attached, and they came close. They were going to film it in New Zealand. I, I mean, I don't know why. But the negotiations broke down, contractual agreements. I'm not sure the whole story. That was very disappointing. 
So there's been various little web series about Halo in various degrees, somewhat disappointing. The Halo TV show, again, I'll give it a 7 out of 10 for Halo fans. This is probably the closest we will get to Halo story lore. It looks good, but yeah, I would love to see a $200 million blockbuster Halo film the way it should be done. And they should base it on, base it on the original book called Halo The Fall of Reach which was written back in the late 90s, which the game is based on. So I think a, a physicist or a college professor wrote the book, had the idea for the novel. The rest is history. Probably the biggest disappointment for the Halo TV series that kind of takes the fun out of it, there's no Halo music. Uh, <laughs> how do you make a Halo TV show without the Halo music? I think there's like five seconds of, you know, Oh, it's 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 like a memory here. I mean, it's, come on, Paramount Plus, and whoever else was involved. You got a Halo show without? Can can you make a Star Wars TV show without Star Wars music? That part's very disappointing. Putting that aside, I'm just ranting now. It see it seems like the Halo TV show is fun to watch, and it's worth five bucks a month to watch that and Star Trek. So, but I'll just play my Halo CD. So yeah. Ozark, you like to watch Ozark season four. I'm not familiar with that, but okay. All right, let, I've been on almost an hour. So it's 5.30, like I said, it's 5.30 p.m. I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. So I'm going to have my uh, dinner, you know, and uh, watch uh, Star Trek Picard episode four just came out, I think. That's it. Halo 4 Forward Unto Dawn was the miniseries, uh, um, I think. Yeah. But um, anyway, at least there's still interest in a Halo, uh, some kind of form of TV production or maybe a movie. I don't know. And I think Halo TV has been renewed for next season. That's how much confidence they have. That's good. So something fun to watch, something different. If you're not a Halo fan or not not into Halo, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. It's 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 fun to watch. Definitely. It's something different. So, yeah. So. All right, I think I'll wrap it up for this one again. If you came in late, you can watch this on replay. So, uh thanks for all the fun for this very chilly uh, Sunday in spring in Ohio. Maybe it'll warm up next week. So Friday coming up is April Fool's Day. Maybe we'll do uh, some fun and fool stuff Friday night. You know, news and nonsense. It's been a while since we've done a news and nonsense, something like that. So maybe Friday night. So again, if you missed any of this, replay it. Uh, the stuff that I do for fun, there's links below in the show notes. Those are Amazon affiliate links. If you use those, I get a little bit of a commission to help pay for all this as you see here so that's it i'll catch you on the next one so keep having fun out there arrivederci